This is the Google Pixel 9 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a black rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the back glass cover. The glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and prying it off. So you won't need to take apart the phone to replace that. 13 T4 or Torx 4 screws need to be removed. Here's a look at the wireless charging coil as well as an NFC antenna. There's also graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. These cables connect the main board to the subboard, and this one connects the main board to the subboard as well as the speaker. To remove the battery, there's a pull tab provided to help you pry it off. We'll also need some isopropyl alcohol to apply on the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute, so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off.
Here's a look at the 4700 milliamp hour battery. Even with some pull tabs and some isopropyl alcohol, it'll take you some time prying this battery off. The coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping it off. This is the 5G millimeter wave antenna. Not all versions of this phone will have the 5G millimeter wave antenna, since not all carriers or networks use that 5G network technology. Most networks or carriers just use the sub 6 GHz 5G technology. Here's a look at the 10.5 megapixel front facing camera. There's a T4 or Torx 4 screw, as well as a standoff screw holding down the main board. Taking a look at the main board, we can see the 50 megapixel primary camera, as well as the 48 megapixel ultra wide lens. The primary camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's also laser autofocus, the back ambient light sensor, as well as the LED flash. The LED flash and ambient light sensor flex cable can be separated from this extension cable on the back. Looking at the back, we can see the proximity and ambient light sensor, as well as graphite film to help transfer heat. There is also a thermal pad on the frame in between the graphite film and the frame itself to help transfer heat. As for the camera connectors, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's another thermal pad seated on top of the RAM, which is seated over the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. Now in addition to this thermal pad, there's additional graphite film underneath it. So there's quite a bit of graphite film and thermal pads to help transfer heat on this phone. The top portion is 3D graphite, which is multiple layers of graphite, so it's much thicker than the rest of the graphite foam. The flex cable for the screen is still attached to the subboard on the other side, so you'll need to disconnect it before removing the subboard. If you needed to replace the screen, you wouldn't have to disassemble anything on the phone. All you would have to do is heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the screen off and disconnect the flex cable from the subboard. At that point, you just apply some new adhesive, reconnect the replacement screen flex cable to the subboard and reapply the replacement screen to the frame. So basically all there is is adhesive holding the screen to the frame. I'm not gonna pry the screen off since I don't wanna risk damaging a working screen. Looking at the subboard, we can see the primary microphone located here, and next to that is a charger port, and there's a gray rubber gasket around the charger port. The charger port is located on this replaceable subboard and is no longer soldered to the main board, making it much easier to replace the charger port. The SIM and memory card reader is located on the other side. Here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly. And there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the opening of the speaker. The linear haptic feedback motor or vibrator motor is located here, which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. And the same goes for the earpiece speaker, which is located on top. To replace the flex cable for the volume or power buttons, there are three T4 or Torx 4 screws, which are holding on a metal plate, which need to be removed in order to release that flex cable.
Here's a better look at that. As for the buttons themselves, those can be replaced or removed by pulling them out. There's a single T4 or Torx 4 screw holding down the antenna board on the top corner. There's a secondary microphone on this board, and this also connects the earpiece speaker to the main board via flex cable. On the back side, we can see the contacts which make a connection with the earpiece speaker and give it signal. There's also another thermal pad which sits underneath the 5G millimeter wave antenna to help transfer heat. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything is back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back cover. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.